study of military history is both an academic pursuit and a public pursuit. You can easily divide it into those categories, but at the end of the day, you are talking about a topic that does have its own weight, its own strengths, its own weaknesses. It's a topic that has its own controversies. But when you think about military history, you're talking about a larger study. It's a story by, of our ideals, of what we value. And you can see that really well displayed, well exhibited. So when you come into the museum, you'll first encounter uh, a display of a World War I trench and what the average infantry soldier would have experienced while he was in France. As you move through the gallery, you'll see a display of artillery, which explains a little bit about military tactics through time. As you continue through, we talk about mechanized infantry, and this is where you'll visit our World War I tank. You'll see some displays related to small arms before moving into our sea power gallery where you can learn about Pennsylvania's history in the U.S. Navy. Continuing on through the museum, we talk a little bit about the advent of air power and its use before moving into our logistics gallery where we really explore how transportation impacted the armed forces and how they did their jobs. The, the, the subject of history can be rather boring for some folks. It can be a little bit dry, a little pragmatic, especially when you're talking strictly about tactics, strictly about you know, campaigns, or really, let's be honest, the regurgitation of facts and figures. But whenever young folks, um, and even you know, folks of any age, really, that come through here, what they're going to feel immediately is like, wow, I can't believe how big this stuff is. Because when you're looking at it through a video game or you're looking at it through a computer screen, you know, we have that high-tech side. But that high-tech side only goes so far. So here you have almost a high-touch side, where now you can see the real stuff. And the fun part about what we have as far as our collection and our artifacts is that this stuff was built for combat. When they walk in here, their eyes turn into walnuts because of the excitement and value of how big this stuff is, how loud this stuff can be. And of course, the big moving parts and the smells and, and even the, the adults love to see this stuff because it connects those two generations, the generation of wonder and, and, and amazement and the generation of experience. The greatest part of military history is that it's an unending source and well of, of programs, ideas, and of, of hands-on activities for all ages. So behind me with the artillery, you can easily talk about mathematical principles. You can talk about engineering and even like the tank with this, its palette of colors, you can talk about art. You can talk about psychological warfare. You can talk about all of these pieces of military history that depending what your you know, learning style is or, or learning language is, there's something for you. So when you come to the military museum, we have something for everybody, both in programmatic means, but also in artifact means. That way there's a connection to be had. And, and that's the value of military history. It's not just one pigeonholed time period. It's not just one thing, one person. There's so much you can do with it that I would say that's its challenge, is that there's always something more, better, and bigger that you can do, but you only have so much time with the visitor. And so you really want to capitalize and, and, and value the visitor's time and, and respect that. The visitor's sovereign, but you try to make those connections. And that's why I think military history is so fun, is that it, it, it provides the connections for everybody.